Hello there and welcome to another A Posteriori Gearsbot tutorial. And when we left off, I asked you to try to use the ultrasonic sensor to create the basic uh, sumo algorithm, which is when you see something in front of you, move forward, charge at it. When you see nothing in front of you, you basically start turning around until you see it. And if you try to do that, you might have noticed that your robot starts to see the dummy quite early in its turn. So when it starts to turn, it might not be facing in front of it when it starts to move forward. And the reason for that is that ultrasonic sensors uh, basically have a cone of sensing. It's not a laser range finder. An ultrasonic sensor sends a ping and the sound wave doesn't travel forward in a straight line. The sound wave travels forward in a wave. And whenever any of that sound wave hits a surface, it will start bouncing off also in a wave. Uh, so you might get quite a, a wide area of view when you're, when you're using an ultrasonic sensor. But anyways, let's look at that and see if we can improve on that a little bit. Okay, so we'll start with a, a, an if-else. And our question here should be if we see anything, which means if the ultrasonic sensor shows a reading less than 255. So we know that it's on port 2. And we can see that from various elements. First, we can look at uh, the sensor configuration, ultrasonic sensor is port 2. We can look at Python, uh, where we see ultrasonic sensor is connected to in two, input 2. And finally, uh, we can see that also in the sensors table here, uh, where we see in two, which is input 2, or port 2, is the one showing us ultrasonic sensor readings. Okay. And uh, we'll need a less than. If our reading shows us a, a distance less than 255 centimeters, then we should be charging forward. Otherwise, we should be turning around. OK, we can charge forward really fast and see what that does. Okay, we see something because it's at the edge of our view. Okay. And unfortunately, we're going so fast that even before we have a chance to uh, for the dummy to fall and for us to not see anything in front of us, uh, we're falling off with it. Rather than changing the algorithm too dramatically, let me just slow down the speed a little bit um, and see if our robot has a chance of uh, falling off. Something's wrong. Uh, of course, I forgot to put in a, a loop around all of this. <clears throat> if you've noticed that before I did, kudos to you. So uh, basically, it was waking up, making a single decision, uh, either turning or moving forward, and then just doing that for the rest of the simulation. So now we should be in a better uh, shape. So we can see it moves, it sees it, it moves forward. Then it, because it's a cone, uh, the cone, all of a sudden it comes out of the viewpoint of the cone. And once it traps it, um, it can follow it. Uh, again, even with this speed at that angle, uh, we don't really have a chance to see the red. Uh, I'll try one more example just to see if we get a slightly better result. Whoa, definitely bad. <laughs> so we can see that the program works in general. Uh, whenever we don't see something in front of us, we start to turn. Whenever we see something in front of us, we charge. Okay, we just have a problem that by the time that the fixed dummy falls away below us, uh, by that point, we're too far off the edge of the field to be able to recover from it. So we'll need to add something to do with uh, being able to see the edge of the field. And luckily, we have this uh, beautiful uh, red ring around the edge of the field, and we can use our color sensor to detect red. 
there's a few ways to do this. Okay, so uh, we'll use one of those uh, ways now to prevent ourselves from falling off. Uh, before we do that, uh, it would be cool if we just move forward and as we're moving forward, we will just uh, print out what we're seeing in those three different uh, ways that I just mentioned. So we'll just move forever. And we'll uh, print the color that we're seeing and we'll print it in, in slightly different ways. So first we'll print uh, RGB. So in order to do that, maybe I will create a, a beautiful uh, uh, text, a formatted text. So first let's create this uh, nicely formatted text that shows the three red, green, blue uh, elements of the sen of the color sensor that it returns. So we'll want to return uh, our red and our green and our blue. And maybe I'll add um, just parentheses around it. I cannot remember for the life of me if uh, there's any space between numbers or if we're just going to see uh, uh, lots of numbers without any separator between them. Let's just take a quick look at what that looks like in our... Yeah, so 255 for everything, but we don't see any commas or spaces, so I'll need to add those if I want to make beautiful text. So I will add another item between each one of the colors. It's quite a lot of code for just creating uh, uh, some text. But, you know, we want some perfection here. So let's add a comma and maybe a space. And I'll duplicate that and add it here as well. And now, uh, whenever we travel, we can see our red, green, blue, red, green, blue. And when we get closer to uh, the red, those numbers should shift a little bit. And we'll start seeing uh, some other results and then some unexpected things when we get down to uh, space. But yeah, at some point, you can see a very high red and a very low green and blue. So maybe you want to detect whenever uh, red is over 250 and green and blue are both less than zero. That's one approach. Uh, another approach would be to print um, another approach would be to use just the the name or the color and uh, I don't remember all of the Lego uh, special numbers for colors, but uh, this shows me that six is for white. And when we get to red, we might see, okay, so red is five. And uh, one last approach that I kind of like because it makes the code a bit more readable is uh, if we use, instead of color, the color name. So without anything in front of us, if I run it, I can see yeah, the bottom, uh, uh, the white surface shows me white, and as I uh, pass over the red surface, I will start seeing red, and maybe eventually I'll see black and yellow and other things in space as I tumble along. Okay, um, so I like to use this last approach uh, to test for whenever the color is, uh, while the color is not red, or if the color is red, turn around. While the color is not red, um, uh, do your other uh, algorithm. So I would add another else here. Oops. Uh, sorry, another else if in the middle. Uh, our first check should be, are we on top of red? If we are, um, we need some logic here. If we see red, then what we should be uh, avoiding it like the plague. So let's just finish that. So how to avoid it? We'll talk about that in a second. Otherwise, if we don't see red, let's do what we were doing before, which is if we see uh, something in front of us, move forward. Otherwise, uh, start turning around. 
Okay, and how do you deal with uh, when you see red? What should you do? Should you just start moving backwards? Um, for instance, if I just do something like this, would this work? We can test that. It must reach red first. Okay, we saw red, we bounced back a bit. So now we're seeing red, we're bouncing back, seeing red, we're bouncing back, seeing red, we're bouncing back, back, seeing red, back, until uh, we managed to slightly get out of it just because of noise. Uh, really what would happen is you're going backwards negative 20, you're going forwards 20, backwards 20, forwards 20. If there wasn't any noise in the system or uh, uh, if the physics engine didn't behave that way, uh, we would be caught in an infinite loop going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards. Um, so that that's not necessarily the best approach, although it seems to have... Uh, been okay for that. Uh, another way to think about it is whenever we see red, we should move away from it for uh, a little bit and maybe turn slightly. And I usually like to turn the exact same uh, direction that uh, my other terms are, are using. So let's try that. Um, we'll, uh, we'll move for a particular amount of, of distance. Maybe we'll do negative uh, 20 and negative uh, 10. Okay. That should move us uh, backwards in with it should move us backwards and also give it a little spin so we're not uh, going backwards and then forwards in the exact same direction. Okay, uh, hopefully this will get us to the red line quickly so we can see how that behaves. Okay, so we did that. Uh, if that's too much, you can change that. But we we moved and we turned a little bit and then we turned a bit more uh, to to find the next dummy in front of us. Now, you can see we're not driving towards it because as the further away from you, the the bigger the lip of the cone in front of the ultrasonic sensor is, and um, uh, the, the, the more you see uh, in front of you in terms of the breadth of view. The closer you are, the, the, the narrower the cone is, and uh, you, you'll get on things a bit uh, better. So now we can think about <clears throat> some more optimizations. We've managed to clear the red uh, falling off the edge hurdle. Uh, <clears throat> now we have a problem of we're never quite, uh, it's all red. Um, we never uh, quite in front of uh, a box whenever we're turning around. Uh, this eventually will succeed. It's not the optimized algorithm because it does take us quite a bit of time to get to that point. And we see that there's a lot of problems with detecting the middle of the dummies. I want to give you a chance to explore that yourselves and try to uh, improve this. And also try to think about how to gamify this in the sense that how long does it take your robot to knock off all random dummies uh, placed in this field. If you don't have a good idea of how to do gamification in general and how to use the timers to measure time, uh, you can look at the gamification video in the line following playlist to see what we did there. From here on, it's basically just optimizations. Uh, another aspect that we can talk about in the next video will be uh, how to improve on your robot's uh, physical design in uh, a sumo wrestling environment. Um, and we can uh, change our physical design by going to the robot configurator. And if you have a chance, you can look at that. Uh, once we've created a few different designs, we can test them against each other in the Sumo Arena. And that will be the subject, again, of the next video. Okay, Enjoy gamifying your uh, random world, and I'll see you soon.